In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an equivalent to an L-match antenna tuner for HF using inductors and magnets with no need for a variable capacitor in the normal sense. Okay. Uh, this is one I built ages ago. Yes, I'm terrible. It's messy, whatever, but it's the fundamentals that, that matter. So, in this case, uh, on the transceiver side, I have a twisted pair, well, I'll start here, a twisted pair, okay, of wires, so I've got my red and black, with nine turns on an L15 toroid, okay, so nine turns of a twisted pair, the active, the, the center conductor of the coax from this side, does its nine turns, and then goes to the center conductor on the output side, and it's varied, the the through inductance is varied by the magnet okay so when this has let's like, say north and south at the ends here when when the it, when it's in this orientation of course the, the imagine the torus field that comes out and around in both directions all or all directions that torus field is ducting straight through this core so that is has reduced the inductance value okay and we can adjust it in degrees and um, in this orientation as the torus is now not going right around that core this has increased the inductance value of course we can further increase it by taking it away or using a weaker magnet and we can further decrease it if you want by sending the field straight through this way um, so you have to play with your values with the magnets. Now, the um, it's a twisted pair. So on the output side of the twisted pair, you know, the far end, take your black wire and run it across to another inductor, same core value, and that takes nine turns across to ground. Okay. Um, I will show a bit more here. So, Essentially, if we look at it this way, we have our AC source, our active and our ground reference. And we're going nine turns through to the output on a ferrite. And in order to be able to adjust against ground with what normally, you know, we, uh, the capacitance would be you know, your opposing sign. So to get that opposing sign, <laughs> I'm tapping the inductance from the opposite end, okay? And yes, it's floating with respect, so the other end's not connected to anything. So you can say, oh, well, look, there is capacitance across it, and there is. But it's a dynamic capacitance, so I'd prefer to call it a dynamic dielectric inductance, okay? So we, we're actually using magnetic and dielectric inductance to cause this effect. So as we adjust the um, inductance value, we're changing magnitudes. And of course, this is seeing all those changes and it's in the inverse because of the direction. Okay. Now, and it's capacitively coupled. Then that goes through another nine turns across to ground, and same story, uh, inductance is variable. Now, what you can do to further diversify it, and the next one I build, um, I will do this, is actually tap this end as well, and, and switch it. So you can switch which end you're sending through that variable inductor to ground. That will further broaden your range, like step up, step down, so on. So you, you could literally have this end and this end switchable to this inductor. So essentially like this. So we have our active going straight through the variable inductance. And we have our uh, dielectrically and, well, uh, <laughs> uh, dielectrically and magnetically inductively coupled inductor here and we can then switch and take our choice on which sign 
we want to vary across to ground. So it is absolutely diverse. It is a fantastic um, antenna tuner, right? So uh, enjoy. So here, I'm going to demonstrate it in use. Now, uh, so I've got this one on what would be the capacitance across the ground with a uh, low core saturation and this one with a high core saturation, okay? And I'll transmit and you'll see that uh, I've got a low SWR, okay? Now, um, I'll simply just turn this tiny bit and still low, okay? There we go, turned it a fair bit. Off, off the chart, okay? I'll bring it back. Not quite. It's a shame I can't show it all at once. I'm really not good with videos, all right? But I'm, there you go. So I've got it nice and low there. What I'll do is I'll adjust this one, the through inductance, off the scale. So, here we go. All right, so that's 40. And what I'm tuning into right now, <laughs> literally, I've just got the active of the coats connected to this scrap bit of bloody electric fence tape dangling in the tree. <laughs> All right, so just to demonstrate. Uh, let's see if I can bring that scrap bit of wire in at 80 meters then. All right. So um, I'll try. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Amazing. It was already in. I'll turn that off the scale. Wow, so that was nice. It had a match on 80 and 40. Now, there is one more thing I must warn you about, okay? You can often get more than one match. So don't just assume that a low SWR means you've got an effective transfer to the antenna. Check that with a field strength meter. Because you can get a match that doesn't transmit at the antenna, okay? Where, you know, a really diverse tuners can do that. They can tune into themselves, okay? So, there you go. Please enjoy. Uh, of course, um, such a system could be created with uh, motors to control the magnets. Um, I have built versions in the past that utilized electromagnets to steer permanent magnetic fields. Um, and uh, if you were to use a motorized version, for example. By the way, when you get it, let's say you get it into the tune range you want, you can, let's say, glue the magnets in place and then come up near the system with a strong permanent magnet and make adjustments and you will tune, retune. 7-3 and thanks for watching.